Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, many, many, many. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for coming uh, for the event, everybody. Today is our special day because we have our uh, state senator, Jose Peralta, come to our chamber. And thank you, Mr. Senator. Okay. And it's our honor to have you here in our chamber. Let's give you a very welcome to uh, Mr. Jose Paul. Uh, Zetian Chamber of Commerce is a uh, non-profit organization. We, uh, it was founded in 2008, and we have about 350 uh, corporate members and 1,500 individual members. Uh, most of them are in the international real estate, and uh, 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 you know, supermarket, and also retail, and also uh, clean energy businesses. Our mission is to foster economic growth and prosperity by promoting interests of Zhejiang businesses through uh, education, meetings, and uh, networking, and, and strive to become the premier resources for, the, for all Zhejiang businesses, both in China and in the United States. In the past few years, we have uh, worked very closely <coughs> with SBA and IRS and other governmental agencies to, uh, to help our members to better understand the, uh, uh, the government policies and to make sure our members and the businesses in our community to grow faster. Now, we also work very closely with other business associations, such as the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the um, American Chinese Import and Export Association and the Chinese American Startup Association. And uh, we work very closely with them, try to just to help the business people in the community to grow faster. Uh, last year, we also published the uh, U.S. Business Handbook, the Chinese version, and to help Chinese to quick start up the business in the United States. Uh, uh, we also teamed up with a lot of uh, many professionals, such as CPAs, lawyers, and business consultants, to provide a full range of services to our members and other businesses in the community. Uh, this year uh, is a, uh, a busy, very busy year for us because we already uh, scheduled seven seminars with SBA, so mainly here, it's SBA and a co-sponsor a business expo uh, here in the Flushing. And also we are planning to publish uh, EB-5 investor, uh, immigrant investor handbook, Chinese version also, and to our member, uh, uh, and, to, and also organize some trips to China, uh, business trips to China. And I hope, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, you can support us, will support us, in completing all these tasks and also help us to interact with uh, uh, more business associations in the Queens or in, in the state so we can you know help you know the, the community better also help the business better thank you My name's Ron Kim. I'm a member of the New York State Assembly. I've been in office for a little bit more than two months now. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still new to um, politics and, and the local government scene here. But you know, I'm not new to public service. You know, I've been in, in uh, government for over 10 years, and I work with a number of elected officials in New York. Um, and my office is actually right across from here. So I travel very far to get here. <laughs> Uh, but I want to really welcome our Senator Jose Peralta uh, to Flushing. He's no stranger to Flushing. He's been here many, many times and he's been a strong advocate for the Asian American community as an assemblyman, as a state senator, and now he is running for the Queensboro President's seat um, in Queens. And we need a, a strong advocate who understands uh, Asian American commerce. Um, Asian American small business needs, um, and, more, and also very importantly, how to work together beyond the Asian American community. And it's no, you know, everybody knows Latino 
and the Asian businesses are the two fastest growing businesses in New York City. You know, we have so much um, entrepreneurs in this borough who are constantly looking to get ahead and who are constantly willing to put in the work and, and strive toward that American dream. And there's no better person who knows about that struggle um, than our Senator Jose Peralta. So it's a great, great pleasure for me and an honor to bring him um, to Flushing again, and he will be singing much more um, often in the near future. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome our great Senator, uh, Jose Peralta. Thank you, Assemblyman Kim. That sounds good, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thank you, Howard, uh, for inviting me today to for inviting me today to, um, to your chamber and, and to discuss the, the, the needs and the intricacies of small businesses, not only in Queens, uh, but in particular here in Flushing and throughout um, the borough. I am, as you know, I represent uh, Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, Corona, uh, East Elmhurst, Woodside, parts of Astoria Heights, and I've represented that area now for two and a half years in the New York State Senate. One of my priorities has been in the New York State Senate is making sure that we bring economic development to uh, Queens, to the borough of Queens. And we have so many projects that are, um, that are coming up that, that we can point to that are in the process, like the potential Major League Soccer Stadium that, 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 we're, that we're looking at. Um, Woolwich Point is something that's going to be um, discussed down the road. Um, but the idea there is to make sure that anyone who's going to come with a project to Queens, that we get an opportunity, MWBEs, minority <coughs> women and businesses, get an opportunity to be a part of the projects. Um, so it's not just making sure that it's always, that's been the traditional groups that, that have been putting the projects forward and, and, and moving them along, but when they come to Queens and if they want to do business in Queens, that minority women businesses are involved. Um, and that they, because we have so many groups and so many businesses that can do the job uh, appropriately and in, are certified on New York State. So why not give um, these individuals the opportunity to be part of mega projects? Um, but those are the mega projects that we can talk about um, down the road. But it's also the, the small businesses that, that we need to focus on. Because as you know, small businesses is, is the heart and soul of <laughs> the economic engine of the state. And when you talk about small businesses, we need to make sure that small businesses that come here to open up understand that they have a good um, plan, a good work um, business plan, first and foremost. Second, that they understand what the rules and regulations of the policies that, that are going to administer it or oversee them. So we need to make sure that um, Asian American, Latino Americans, and, and immigrants who are coming here to live that American dream and trying to strive to be that entrepreneur, that they understand the rules and regulations that they're going to be um, held accountable for. And sometimes what unfortunately ends up happening currently is that the rules and regulations change throughout depending on the week. So when you have, for example, a restaurant and someone comes in from the Department of Buildings, They'll tell you one thing, some inspector tells you one thing, and then a week later another inspector comes over and tells you a completely different thing. Um, and they tell you, don't listen to the last person who showed up, listen to me. And they start giving you fines. We don't need to, to make it more difficult for small businesses um, to maintain themselves here. We need to make it easier for them. So we want to streamline these rules and regulations so that everyone universally understands the rules and they're not made up or changed as the policy goes on. Uh, so what I'm doing and working on is a plan so that we can streamline all agencies here in Queens so when you have a small business wanting to come down uh, and open its doors, they can be helped along the way from A to Z, from a, starting with their business plan to how do they maintain themselves, to understanding the rules and regulations of the game in the city of New York and the state of New York, so that it's not affected, so they're not affected. Because it's frustrating when you as an investor and someone who's an entrepreneur comes here, invests hundreds of thousands of dollars in a business, and then the rules and regulations change on you or are very fluid. And if you don't know these rules, then uh, why do business in Queens? 
Why, why not just shut your doors and say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go somewhere else. We want to make it very easy for small businesses to maintain themselves here. And because if small businesses are successful, then Queens is successful. An idea here is to make sure that we make Queens a destination, a place where people can raise their family, um, work, um, open up their businesses, and grow. Um, unfortunately, what we hear, um, and it happens in every community, is that um, most small businesses that open up their doors um, falter within the, within the first few years because it's so difficult to maintain themselves, it's so difficult to understand the ins and outs of all the regulations that they don't know what to do next. Everyone can, people can come here with a great vision, some may need more direction and more focus. What is the business plan? How do I go from A to B to C so I can open up my business? How do I now that I've opened up my business and I've been around for about a year or so, how do I now successfully maintain myself so that it can, I can keep the people coming to, to my small business. And then afterwards, how do now I grow and expand and, and do it successfully so that uh, when I expand, I don't get hit with various issues that the city, unfortunately, nowadays likes to hit small businesses with because of revenue. They want to make money. Um, we want to make sure that the real estate industry is very um, uh, informed of not only what's available, but but how to attract businesses from, from other boroughs, from other countries, here to Queens. Queens, as you all know, is the United Nations of all boroughs. You can walk up and down any borough, any, any street, and, and literally walk into a different country. And that is the beauty of this borough, is the fact that we all live here, we all get along, and we all want to live that American dream. <laughs> Come here, work hard, play by the rules, so that we can maintain our, our, our not only our businesses, but our families. Our, our, our children can get the best education. Our streets are safe. Um, and a place that we can afford. So let's make sure that prices are not skyrocketing out of control so that when we try to open up businesses, um, it's a detriment as opposed to a positive. So these are some of the things that, that I've been pushing um, in general in not only my district but in the borough of Queens and I want to continue to do so as the next Queens borough president but the idea here is to make sure that we have a collaboration between um, Asian Chamber of Commerces and Hispanic Chamber of Commerces and and other Chamber of Commerces so that people can come together and talk about best practices what is it that you know that we don't know that we can help you with that you can help us with and vice versa how can how can you help us um, maintain our business? How can you help us with best practices? And I think that once we do that and we uh, talk about best practices and we network, um, there's that dialogue then crosses over and we can have a successful um, not only Chamber of Commerce but also a successful borough. And when you talk about flushing, and it's interesting because Controller Tom DiNapoli did a, a, a study in the flushing area just several years ago and flushing is prospering. Regardless of the economic development, uh, the downturn of the economic development, flushing is prospering. So the chamber and, and the small businesses are doing something right. Um, but now we want to make sure that we eliminate some of the obstacles that are put in place um, for ed everyday small businesses so that we allow you to do it even better than what you've done. Because if you're doing it right and it's a trickle-down effect, then we can get the Hispanic um, uh, businesses to do it right. We get to um, do the other immigrant groups to do it right, the South Asian groups to do it right. We get other groups down the road, and then it becomes a snowball effect where everyone is doing it right and the borough, again, of Queens benefits. So this is, this is something that I'm glad to be a part of. This is something that I'm glad so many small businesses are here uh, to, to, to listen to. And this is a first step <coughs> and many steps down the road where we're going to be collaborating and I know that Howard's already uh, attends many of the Hispanic Chamber events um, and he was just recently at, at their annual dinner um, and we're going to be attending many of the Chamber events, the, um, this Chamber's events, to make sure that, that we continue the networking opportunities and build those bridges uh, and then we start growing and, and, and make sure that everyone, so when policies come down the pipe that are not effective or, or are not progressive for small businesses, we can inform each other and we can, and we can support each other and say that's not good 
for small businesses in Queens. And we want this to stop. So therefore, it's not just one particular group saying it's not good for that particular group, but there's a coalition of people saying we are against this policy or we are in favor of this policy. Um, and then working together with the elected officials, it's that private-public partnership that I think will go a long way in, in making sure that we as electeds um, move forward to policy. And if there is bureaucracy, we can eliminate the bureaucracy so that businesses can um, not only maintain themselves but exceed their expectations. So I'm very proud to be working closely with the chamber and, and, and other chambers as well. And this is my introduction to the chamber. So uh, I, I already feel welcomed uh, today and, and appreciate everything that's being done so that we can forge a relationship um, not only for today but for many, many years to come. So thank you. try our best but we need all the community support but it's not it's everybody's work together with Chamber of Commerce uh, government support then we have a prosper, prosper future thank you now any the <laughs> question and questions you know. um, Senator, um, Of course. Um, here's uh, this latest poll. I think is something that you need to put it into perspective. Um, first and foremost, 60% uh, of the primary vote is minority. Um, so we have to ask the question: Who did they ask? Who did they call? Where? What areas were called? Uh, out of the 700 people that were that were called, 
300 of them are from Queens. So not 700 of them were from Queens. So we need to ask where those 300 people were called from. Uh, in particular, were they just Astoria? Was it Forest Hills? Was it Bayside? Um, and you have to ask those type of questions and what type of questions were asked. So that's why we, we um, will we'll re be requesting what the poll looks like because the poll was on casino gambling. Um, but already some experts have already pointed out that there are some flaws in the poll just because understanding that over 60% of the primary vote is minority and um, now it sort of brings up the question who was actually called uh, to say that that uh, Mr. Ballone was in charge so uh, not only myself as well as other candidates have, have questioned the poll. And I'm sure that is your first step in reaching the Asian community so what are your next steps? Well not only just to reach out to the Asian community but also the South Asian community to also um, the African American community, also um, uh, every community that you can think of. It, it's about making sure that we work together. I represent the what I like to call the United Nations of all Senate districts. If you take my Senate district, it really is very diverse. We have um, Asian Americans, um, Eastern Asian, and Southern Asian. We have we have um, Latinos from all parts of, of the world. We have Russians, we have Jews, we have Italians, um, we have African Americans. You name it, we have it. And the fact that I've, I've managed to represent that area for over two and a half years and prior to that, eight years in the assembly, which is a bulk of that Senate district as well, um, I feel gives me the experience and the know-how to, to, to now the, go to the next level, which is a natural fit, and represent this great diverse borough. So um, we're reaching out to everyone. We're going to continue reaching out to, to um, all ethnic groups because I think that it, it's the, our diversity that gives us our strength. And we can sort of pull together um, the know-how and the expertise that we have and make Queens into the destination, make Queens into the borough that everyone wants it to be. Uh, we that live in Queens are already proud of living in Queens, but we need to make sure that we change the mentality outside of the borough. We need to make sure that people stop thinking of Queens as an outer borough. Um, that's code for you're not going to get enough resources, you're not going to get sanitation pickups, you're not going to get um, everything that you deserve as a borough. Uh, where we have everything here, we have the airports. If you want to come into New York, you're going to have to come through Queens, right? We have both airports. So, but we have to change the mentality of when you land in New York, people say I landed in New York, right? They don't say I landed in Queens, right? So we have to change that mentality to where people understand that they landed in Queens. So we have the airports, we have the best parks, we have the best restaurants, we have the, the best diversity, the most talented individuals. Um, and, and that's something that we need to market. So if we market that well, working together with small businesses and economic development, um, and bring the prosperous um, uh, projects into the borough, then people are going to want to call this, this borough home. And people are going to want to not only work here, but also raise their family here. So um, there's a lot of work to do, but we're, we know that we're, we're more than ready for it. So considering Asia is fast growth, uh, growing ethnic group, and the Chinese is a fast growing group in the Asian group. So what do you, what do you, um, what kind of things specifically you can do for the Chinese community? Because uh, basically Peter Malone already came to the Chinese community like last year, uh, the year before, actually, um, two years ago. And, uh, you know, Barry, he has been the mm -hmm. assemblyman here for two years. Mm -hmm. So so why people should vote for you or not? I mean, Well, look, I, I think that we, we, we share we share an experience that, that the other candidates really don't share with you, and that is the immigrant experience. My parents came here to live the American dream. Um, they worked hard to put their children through school, and that, that's something that, that we can share that we're connected uh, with. The fact that I represent um, the United Nations of all Senate districts is something that no one else can sort of um, uh, call that as, as an issue because um, they don't. Um, my, my district is, is the most diverse district that you can think of in, in the Senate in this borough of Queens. And uh, working together with not only with uh, Ron Kim currently, but also previous to Ron. Uh, we work, I worked together on various issues with Grace Meng um, here in the Flushing area, um, as well as Peter Koo um, after he became a Democrat. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, working together uh, to, and Toby Savisky uh, when I was in the assembly. 
uh, working together with Senator Stavisky here on this side, uh, making sure that the Asian Americans were not under uh, it was always about immigration, it was always about small businesses, it was always about um, tax returns. So there were very issues that I've been working on with all the elected <laughs> officials over the last eight to ten years um, that was in Flushing. Um, maybe I wasn't as visible uh, as, as, as many of the others uh, because it's their area, uh, but when I come into an area, I like to make sure that the elected officials that represent the areas are the ones that get the, the prime spot, and usually I was in the background. Right now, your district also includes the Empress, and the Empress there are a large population of Chinese. Yes. So, do you have some specific case you can show us? So, uh, your office or you have so done service for the trans community there? Yes, I'm um, working closely in my office. We, we've worked on a lot of immigration cases in my office. We've worked also with a lot of small business cases. Constituent services, uh, people coming into my office uh, to discuss constituent issues whether it's been immigration, whether it's been small businesses, whether it's been um, just quality of life issues, um, whether it's uh, an apartment issue that, that someone is having with their landlord or a rental issue. Um, and the good thing about my office is that we, not only do we market um, and we work with the, um, all communities in the district, but we try to make everyone feel comfortable enough to come into the area, into the district, so that they understand that it's not about status. We, we, it, we can care less about immigration status. We can care less about um, uh, what the issue is in terms of um, it, not creating fear, because people sometimes are fearful of, of coming to a government's office. We let under, people understand you should feel comfortable, you should understand that we are about making sure that your issue is resolved. If you live in my district, then I'm going to be willing to help you. And sometimes we help people that, are, that live outside of the district. I mean, there, there's times that people have lived in Flushing and, and they've come over to my area uh, and asked for assistance. And we've helped them. Sometimes we refer them over to, to uh, Senator Stavisky, but sometimes we've helped them as well. So specific cases um, we've worked on for the last 10 years uh, within the Asian community. So do you have any people in your office that say Chinese? Yes, Chinese and Spanish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how many staff can your office can speak Chinese? Um, in my office, uh, one can speak Chinese and, well, she speaks Spanish, Chinese and Spanish. Yes. But right now there's eight people in my office um, and it is very diverse. You have African Americans, you have Latinos, you have Asians, South Asians, um, and, and white. Will you consider to hire a Chinese speaking staff after, if you're elected as a free school Without person? a doubt, yes. I mean, look, it's, it's reflective of, of the community. So it's not just a um, Asian individual, it's, it's how many Asian um, uh, individuals that are qualified to represent the area. And as the Queensboro president, my my um, uh, my budget increases, so I have more of an opportunity to, to hire more individuals. So the answer is absolutely yes. I've already done so um, with my small budget in the Senate. I will do so as the next borough president. So we have a few uh, business people on the Okay, I'll start with one question. Maybe not um, directly. Uh, only limited to New York State uh, or Queens. Uh, I have dealt with some uh, travel agency, so they have a problem of uh, uh, they need obtain multiple licenses, TLC licenses. If they pick up uh, a, a visitor and uh, tour them around, they need uh, maybe a city license and also line <coughs> license and different area got a different license. And end up they have to pay insurance for. Each they get license and pay the insurance for that license. So end up they can't do the business legally. If made it impossible, that's you know the cost is going to be so high. So do you have any um, are you able to do anything to consolidate and get one license for for a whole route? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. different counties have different licenses because they have different um, tax and limousine co commissions, right? right? Um, we all know of New York cities, but different counties have different <coughs> TLCs. So. What, and this is actually a state issue, um, because what we need to do is make sure that the states, the, the state comes together and says, let's just streamline it. Let's, let's push so that there's one license that people can, can um, have uh, take the, 
their customers in from one place to the other without having to prove that, oh, did you have this license? And then when you go into a different county, do you have this license? So I'm in total agreement with you. Several years ago, we tried pushing that. Uh, unfortunately, the Senate Republicans um, killed it in the Senate before I was in the Senate. Um, but now, um, that's something that we can continue looking up to see how we can streamline it, because you're absolutely correct. We need to streamline it. And I know why they do it. It's because they can collect revenue. Um, uh, but at the same time, we need to make it easier for, for people who are coming, not only the people who are doing this uh, business here, um, uh, to make it easier so they can uh, carry their customers. But also, I mean, let's be honest, if, if I'm coming from, from a different state or a different country and I'm, I get into a cab and I get stopped at the border, the cab gets stopped at the border and they say, oh, can you show me this? Can you show me your license? And then I'm the passenger, I'm saying, what's happening? What's going on? And it's going to make it very good. Next time around, I'm going to tell all my friends, never get into a cab, don't go. To go. So it's going to deter the, the, uh, yeah. the, um, the business. So I understand that aspect of it. And we're going to be, we're going to be looking forward. We're going to be looking towards uh, um, fixing that and streamlining. And, and that's the beauty of, of working at the borough presidency level is that the borough presidency um, really gets uh, to work with all three levels of government, city, state, and federal. And although they don't have legislative power, but they do have the relationships that they've built over the years, and they can use those relationships as leverage to say, this is how we're affecting, this is how this policy is affecting the small business in this area. We need to fix it. And I think that's the bottom line in terms of making sure what's not happening today is that there's no uh, communication between all levels of government so people react to issues like this as opposed to being proactive and if there's a, a, a beginning if there's already a team in different uh, in city hall and the state government and the federal level then there's already a team in place we know what the issues are um, and then the other aspect is to make sure that chain organizations like this like the chambers have a place at the table so when issues come up like this you can present it to the borough president and say hey this, this is a problem and we can call a meeting I can call a meeting and say how can we resolve this um, and that's when the relationships and the elected officials all come into play and say, well, what level of government is this? Is it the state or is it the city? And then we can make it happen. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, just to add on very quickly, um, I mean, I think we need an advocate. It's, it's, there's no secret that Mayor Bloomberg last, you know, a couple of years, and we've been recent articles about how they've been using out of borough small businesses and out of borough workers to close the revenue gap with the, the hidden fees and, and, and the hidden permits, you know, yeah. that are always targeting the, you know, the businesses of an auto borrows. And we need a strong advocate in the borough president's office to make sure that we counter that and to fight for our local businesses and local commerce uh, groups. So, you know, it was a Peralta is a great example of someone who can achieve this. So we look forward to working with them in the future. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I work with Howard with, um, from American Renewable Energy, not particularly the Asian Chamber of Commerce, and I work with Howard um, bringing green energy to residential homes and businesses. I wanted to know if you had any plans of, you know, making Queens one of the centers of green energy since it's a big movement around the nation, but, you know, when you think New York City, you think big buildings, and then Queens gets overshadowed and all of that. Well, that, the answer is yes. The short answer is yes, and, and that's exactly what I'm alluding to when Queens gets forgotten. It has that out of borough mentality of, well, it's Queens, so we really don't need to um, think about Queens. We need to think about Queens when we talk about renewable energy, when we talk about um, making sure that all the green initiatives are pushed forward. So we need to think about Queens. Like today, I know that there was a story that said that New York City tourism is going to focus on a few, a few neighborhoods to start promoting. Well, they should have done this decades ago. Uh, and, and you know, for them to start talking about this pilot program in different neighborhoods um, is a step in the right direction, but it's it's way too slow if you ask me. I think that you need someone on, on, at at a borough wide level to push and make sure that if they're making hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, that um, a portion of it and it comes to Queens and it's equitable in terms of distribution, in terms of how do you promote the borough. So yes, I'm, I'm completely in favor of making sure that green energy um, and renew, renew, um, reusable um, energy is, uh, is pushed, not only in Queens, but we become 
um, a leading borough uh, for the city of New York. Uh, on separate and apart, one of the things that I want to do is I, I want to make sure that we push for, um, I don't know if, um, if many of you are probably, probably aware of the tech center that's being pushed over at Willits Point. Um, we want to make sure that, that um, we bring the best and the brightest into Queens. And when we do, when we, when we push for um, universities um, and, and centers, we want to make sure that we work under the governor's model in making sure that we bring businesses back to Queens. Um, he may not say Queens, but he's a Queens boy. So he, I know he means Queens when he talks about making sure that we bring it back to New York. Uh, I'm a small business owner in the education business. Um, you mentioned about diversity and as well as you have an immigrant mentality to help out the community. So my question to you is, in light of the recent fear that um, after school programs might be cut, um, how do you make sure that um, students, immigrant students, get a, you know, get a good opportunity to learn about the language and the culture? Yeah. Look, uh, in particular, it's, it's usually the, the immigrant pockets that get shortchanged when it comes to after school programs. And as, as an ex-borough president, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, because if, if, if it's the immigrant pockets, well then guess what? It's going to be the whole borough of Queens that's going to get shortchanged. So we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Again, this is where the relationship with city council members, with state um, legislators, and the federal government where we can call upon all three levels and say we need funding and we need funding how federal government how can we bring money to the schools so that some of, a portion of it can be used towards after school programs city council state legislature how can we um, make sure that we push to get more funding for after school program now understanding that we're living in a very tight economy and the governor wants to talk about um, streamlining and, and and making sure that the budget doesn't balloon higher than what it currently is. But we need to make an investment because we don't need latch, um, latch key kids. What we need is in the kids that, are, that have an environment to grow and kids that have somewhere to go. Um, because if they do after school, then it's just going to be able to promote not only their learning ability, their skills, but it's also going to be something where it takes them off the street, uh, where kids, kids are creative. Uh, if they don't have anything to do and their parents aren't home, what's going to end up happening is that they start creating um, ideas of what to do. And, and maybe, and maybe um, it's, not, it's not that particular kid who, ha who gets creative, but maybe it's the friend who says, hey, why don't we do this? And when kids have nothing else to do, then, you know, unfortunately, um, they will do it because uh, they, they, they're not busy. So we need to make sure that they stay busy, and we need to make sure that it's it's busy in a positive way, and after-school programs are the best ways to do it. So I agree. And not only that, I, I am all for keeping the schools, and I know it's going to be about money, but I'm all for keeping the schools open after a certain uh, time. So we can use, we can use the, the, the local schools and keep them open for various other um, programs. It doesn't just have to be um, programs that are um, affiliated with the school, but if, if they are programs that, that are good for the community, I think that if it's a good not-for-profit organization that, that's qualified, that, that already can be vetted by the city, and the city can give the stamp of approval and say, hey, we want to have these cultural programs in the school, and we want it open uh, after 4 o'clock from 4 to 8, why not? Um, just so that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Oh, where where is this non for profit going to teach the, the 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 students? Where where are we going to go? Well, why not use the schools? We have the schools. Well, they're going to say it's going to cost too much because of the custodians and keeping it open and the insurance. Well, look, we can find money for it. The non for profits get money from the city and from and well used to from the state, but from federal um, level as well. We can find the money. We have the schools. Why not utilize the school? Why does a school need to be closed from 4 until 7 o'clock in the morning when we can use that space productively? Thank you. Uh, Senator O'Connor, <laughs> Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Queens, uh, President of uh, Federal. Can you say a few words? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for having me here. I would thank you, Jose. It's great seeing you. Manly, awesome to see you. Uh, sorry for being tardy. I was at a, another meeting and funniest thing you asked about after school programs 
um, for students as well as parents. I just finished coming from Bond College. And this, that was one of the topics that we were talking about. How could local chambers actually, which is a non-prop, actually go out there and get students to actually do some type of positive activity within the schools. And we actually came out with uh, a couple of ideas and which we're actually rolling out. And we actually, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, I've always thought that if the schools are not willing to come to us, we're going to go directly to the schools and offer the same services that we offer to any business owners. Uh, we find that is the time now that with the growth of technology, right, we should be able to offer any type of service. The only thing is just finding the location. We have the volunteers. We have the hard, hard business owners that are willing to give up their time to actually educate, mentor, teach students leadership skills, uh, which a lot of schools don't have after school programs depending on what they want to do we, we have that we have the fundings and we could get the fundings from the state as long as we show that there is a positive trend happening at, at one location uh, I think that you know Jose you know what he's doing and what his vision and his focus is it's something positive that is going to be for all the borough of Queens especially you know the community um, me and him have sat prior to this and we have spoken about a lot of topics. He has some great ideas for the borough, and I think that working together with local organizations will be a profitable things coming on in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, just, so speaking of after school programming, there's one area that I would love to get the support of the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce as well as the Latino community. You know, I have a bill in place, uh, it's called the Desegregation Bill. The problem with some of Asian American communities is that when we collect data to defend the programs that we need, we get lumped as just the Asian American. We don't desegregate, you know, as, as even within Chinese, there's so many different dialects and we should be able to desegregate the data so we can go back to the state and to the Department of Education. These are the needs of the community, but we don't have that data collected and dissected to defend our uh, program and our funding. And that's a bill that we put up, and it's an easy fix. You know, we just need, you know, some political will from both, you know, parties and, and both uh, the assembly and the senate to come together. And that's a start because without the data, it's very hard to defend, at, you know, some of the needs of the after school program as well as the nonprofit needs. Um, so we would love to uh, get support from, from the community as well. Yeah, let me know about yeah. the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Wow, we answered everything? <laughs> that can't be. That's, that's, that's the first thing. Um, just being, you know, uh, you know, being from Queens, I know there's a lot of things you have to target and a lot of concerns to go over. I wanted to know if you had anything specific, like something that would come as a primary focus. Economic development, small business. Um, there, there's, there's four pillars to, to my campaign. First and foremost is economic development slash small business. We need to incre we need to increase the um, amount of economic development that we see in this borough, and we need to promote and market um, this borough that way so that we can bring small businesses in, in into this borough. Uh, Marty Markwitz in Brooklyn does it very well. He's a great cheerleader for the borough. I want to make sure that I partner the style of Marty Markowitz and uh, Scott Stringer or prior to, um, and here, uh, Claire Shulman, who talked about economic development. Um, also partner that with what Helen Marshall has been doing with MWBEs, my, uh, minority women businesses, um, and, and create that amalgam style where we can promote, uh, we can market, and we make sure that Queens becomes the, the center of it all, um, because uh, we all know that Queens is the best borough. We just need to make sure that everybody else understands that Queens is the best borough to have a, a business here. So economic development is going to be uh, the first and foremost. Um, good schools is going to be second because we need to create a, a culture where the schools, not only the kids aren't overpopulated in their location, but there's good policy and it's a good curriculum so that we can prepare our children for the jobs of tomorrow. Uh, safe streets is another issue, which is, which is something that I've been working on, uh, in particular on Roosevelt Avenue for the last 10 years. Uh, making sure that people feel safe walking down certain areas, 
specifically Roosevelt Avenue and other avenues like that, um, after 9 p.m. Um, because we want to make sure that it's a destination and we don't need to scare people off. And affordable housing, you know, um, everything is going up except salaries. You know, uh, you have utility bills going up, you have rental bills going up, you have mortgages going up, you have, you have everything is going up except salaries. Uh, and we need to make sure that, um, that we have affordable housing in this area, uh, in the borough of Queens. And we partner again with the federal government and reinstitute what used to happen back in the 70s and the 80s with these affordable ho housing projects and, and make sure that, that the federal government gets back into that. Uh, because right now the federal government, because they stopped, um, when you talk about affordable housing in, in anywhere in New York City, it, it's kind of like a dead end because no one else, no one, no one does affordable housing really anymore. So we need to make sure that the federal government plays a huge role in reinstituting affordable housing, real affordable housing, not, not you know, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars for you know a one bedroom or or uh, or fourteen hundred dollars for a studio. It's like, you know, real affordable housing based on what people's incomes are. And that's another thing that we're doing. It's up in Albany, we're pushing for an increase of the minimum wage. But down here, it's really about those are the four things that I'm concentrating on as, as my pillars. And of course, I cannot, move, I cannot forget to mention that we need to rebuild smarter and better when it comes to the areas that were affected by Sandy. So this area wasn't really affected as much. Uh, my area that I represent wasn't affected as much, but you talk, if you talk about Far Rockaway, you talk about Howard Beach, those areas were hit hard. So when, when, we need to, when we talk about the reinvestment, the money coming from the federal government, we need to make sure that that money is spent appropriately, wisely, and we rebuild better and smarter. So those are the five issues that, that are going to be uh, part of my campaign with economic development slash small business at the top of my agenda. Maybe Mr. President, was saying that we have we have an organized uh, what's it organized a uh, group trip to China. So we say I invite uh, Korean and uh, Latin, Latino. Yeah, yeah Latino uh, go to the uh, business trip to to China. So uh, maybe uh, this autumn or uh, the summer, later summer, to to China. Uh, and uh, we have a uh, contact with uh, uh, Zhejiang. To the governor, about, uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, it'll help from, uh, from uh, you or the, the Latino business, the Latino uh, community, you know. In terms of helping with the trip to yeah. China or going to the China? Going, 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 to, China. going to China. Well, um, it depends on what day it is because, as you know, I'm running for Queensborough president. <laughs> 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 and, and going. Um, it would be great to go to China after the election. <laughs> um, uh, prior to the election, if it's maybe, I know it's, it takes a while to get there, but I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's for a limited amount of days, I could probably go, but it all depends on what day. Yeah. Thank you. But definitely after the election, it would be good. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Okay, let's uh, um, let's say right. Let's well. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, um, Senator, and also thank you um, for coming to the, the Manly, and also Alfredo, and also thank you very much for the everybody for the for the event. And we have some freshmen in the back. No, uh, please use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh yes. Can I ask you uh, sure. a couple of questions? Yes. Sure. Uh, can you uh, stand up? Oh, you you tell me here. here? Yeah. Okay. Here good. Uh, first of all, uh, tell us your purpose of coming to uh, the Zhejiang Chamber of Commerce today. 
Hi, I'm New York State Senator Jose Peralta, and today we're here to discuss um, the collaboration between Chamber of Commerce's, not only the uh, Chinese, but also the Korean, the South Asian, the Hispanic, the Latino community, where we can all work together as one so that we can promote small businesses um, in the borough of Queens. The borough of Queens, as you all know, is the most diverse borough um, in the city of New York, and there are issues um, when it comes to not only starting a small business, but also maintaining a small business and then expanding a small business. So we want to make sure that those issues are universal issues that are fixed and then are streamlined um, and that everyone is playing by the same rules and the same regulations so it doesn't change uh, on a day-to-day -day basis when uh, and small businesses get affected. So we're here today to talk about is the beginning of talking about a collaboration effort between Chamber of Commerces and how we can promote best practices in various communities so that the entire borough of Queens is prosperous. So next time um, Controller Tom DiNapoli talk, comes over and does a report, he can find the entire borough of, of Queens um, is being very productive. Okay. Can we make some comments about the latest result of the poll? Latest, the, the result of the poll? Oh. Um, yes, uh, the latest polls um, are are something to be questioned uh, because if you really look at the, the sample that's being used, you have to question where out of the 700 people that were called, uh, 300 are from Queens, um, and where where were those uh, people called from? What areas? What neighborhoods were used to to, to talk to these individuals? Um, and it calls into que this is being called into question because 60 percent of the prime vote. In, in the borough of Queens is minority. Uh, so uh, what communities did they reach out to so that they can get uh, the results of these polls? So a lot of the experts are already calling into question the results of these polls. And, and you know, we feel the same way. We need to make sure what methodology was used, what communities were called, um, and to, to get the type of results that, that ended up happening for this latest poll. But we feel confident, we feel very strong that building on my track record, building on the experiences, building on my relationships that I've developed over the last 10 years, that we're going to be very successful. Um, and we're going to make sure that that Queens gets on the map with all these issues that we talk about when we talk about good jobs, good schools, affordable housing, safe streets, and reparations with Tanya. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. Can I have your card? Sure.